All right, so here's an example um, from Shigley. Uh, this is class uh, 25. Uh, this is Miner's rule and Manson's method, and I'm going to cheat because I already have the thing written out, so I'm just going to narrate through an example. I don't know how useful that is, but uh, we'll see. Um, so the material properties of a machine part are 85 KSI. Um, we've looked up, uh, the, the, that's the ultimate strength. Um, we have looked up and found that the corresponding F to use is 0.86. Uh, we've been given the fully corrected endurance strength, so we don't have to use any of the Marin factors. Uh, we're told that the alternating stress is 35 KSI and the um, uh, mid-range stress is 30 KSI. And this is a, and that right there is applied for 12,000 cycles. They want to use the Goodman criterion to estimate a new endurance limit and with both uh, Myers method and Manson's. So this one uh, right here, we get the uh, reversible, um, equivalent reversible stress that's taking place uh, for this thing. And uh, that's going to be 54.09 KSI, right? Um, which is uh, significantly greater than the endurance strength. Therefore, yes, it will, um, it, it is going to eventually fail, right? It, it is not infinite. Um, so what we do to, uh, to estimate uh, the life of the thing, all right? So the first estimate that we want to try to get is how long will the thing last, right? So we, we're, we, we, we need, um, and n1 right so at, at the at the um at this stress what is the life of the thing so that we, we use this equation right here so obviously we need to find um the, those parameters so we start with that f s u t and the endurance strength and we find a and then we find uh, b in the similar manner using these uh, equations that we should be used to at this point and so we have the coefficient and we have the exponent. And then we take uh, this equation and we estimate, well, estimate it's always an estimate. Uh, we get the value, um, so it's like 72,830 cycles. We, were, we used up 12,000 of them. So the remaining amount of cycles that we would have left at that stress level would be uh, 60,830. If we're gonna use Miner's rule, to try to estimate a new SE, um, what we do is we, we need to find a new coefficient because the slope is going to be the same. Remember that we're trying to take a um, get an equation. We're trying to get a coefficient and an exponent that describes the new line that would exist after we've used up 12,000 um, cycles. So. Um, and graphically, I've depicted it over here. So you can see um, that here's the 54.9 uh, uh, level right here. Here's where we use up. Here, here, here is the, uh, we used up 12,000. Because it's logarithmic, it's sometimes it's difficult to, to get an impression as to uh, what these lengths are going to be. But like, right here is how much we used up. And then if we compare that to what the actual life would have been, which is something up to, up to right there, right there, we subtract those two things out. Um, we're able to find that 60,000, which is right here, right? So that's, that's what that is showing. Uh, I think I calculated these by hand. Um, so there's some round off error compared to what I did in Excel, because I actually did the problem in Excel when making it, uh, making these graphs. Um, Okay, so um, we're, we, we go through here and figure out what A2 is going to be. Um, and that's this right here. And then now, so we can go ahead and plug that in, but stick in a million in for this. And we find the intersection. And so that's the new SE, right? So that's the new, uh, estimate the new endurance limit, right? So if we could still stay, and one of the reasons we might want to know that is we might want to stay below that endurance limit um, 
in order to be infinite life, right? So, uh, so, so there, it is a different uh, level that we have to worry about. Now, to do it with Manson's method is a little bit more trickier mathematically. We take two points and we put them into uh, this form right here. So the two points that it's going to pass through is going to be F times SUT, which we found up above, right? Um, and at, that occurs at 1,000 right there, right? So right here at this uh, 1,000, that knee on the SN diagram right at that spot. Um, so that's going to be one of the points that the new thing is also the other point that it's going to pass through is uh, th this one that, that was the um, N minus N, capital N1 minus a little lowercase n1, and uh, that original reversible stress, right? That, that guy right there uh, that we got. Um, so putting them into place, what we end up finding, we need to take the log of these in order to get the exponent down because we notice that the coefficients cancel each other out. So finding what that, uh, that exponent is going to be is right here. And now that we have a new equation, we could go ahead and plug in well, now that we have a new B, we could plug that in and find out what the new coefficient is going to be. So now we have a new exponent and a new coefficient for this equation. So now we could plug in 1 million into there and figure out where the intersection is with 1 million. And that's going to be our new SE1 using Manthus method. And you can see that in this instance, it's going to be a lower number. It doesn't necessarily have to be a lower number. It depends on how much got used up in the, in the uh, initial thing. And which stress is larger, by the way. Well, which, uh, how large the stress is. So it's, all a, it, it's a graphical uh, technique. It's a, a shortish video because I didn't have to take all the time to write things down. But hopefully, it's still useful um, to someone trying to uh, understand uh, how, how to manipulate these uh, um, equations with these lines to understand how the cumulative damage um, is, uh, is assessed.